Hey guys, Sam here again. Today we're going to talk about trajectory validation and how to do it with the Kester Elite. Okay, trajectory validation is all about getting your ballistic solver, your gun, your scope, your ammo, everything all lined out together. Uh, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in taking a long range shot, so you want to remove all the variables that you can and just make it all work right. Uh, the very first thing you need to do is work on your inputs that you're going to put into your solver. So you need to have your zero perfect exactly in the middle of the target at whatever range you want to zero it at. I use 100 yards because the environmental factors won't come into play at 100 yards. I don't have to worry about wind, I don't have to worry about angles, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. I can zero my gun on this old logging road or I can zero my gun at home. It's just real easy to do it at 100 yards. The second thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you aren't shooting in conditions while you're doing your validation that you can't read. It will drive you absolutely crazy if you have a wind between you and whatever distance you're shooting that you can't see and it's making the bullet go up or down or something like that. Uh, while we're talking about that, the trajectory validation phase of any kind of gun build or anything like that, for me, uh, takes place over several different trips out shooting. I don't just go out one day, uh, find a rock face at a thousand yards, shoot it and say, I'm done. I want to shoot in two or three or four different places under a couple of different conditions and start to get, you know, just kind of a good feeling about the validation. Uh, it's all science, it should just work, but I've seen it where I go out one day and I think everything is perfect and I'm a genius, and then I go out another day and I'm a full minute low or a full minute high on something and I can't figure it out. So I like to go over several different trips and shoot it in a couple of different places. The other thing I always do is I always get my muzzle velocity measured on a good chronograph. I've been using a Magneto Speed, the version 2, for a couple of years now and I really like it. Uh, before that I was using an Ailer 35 and I've shot both those chronographs consecutively at the same time and they just agree with each other. So I trust them 100%. Uh, a lot of guys will say you don't really need a muzzle velocity, you can just go out and shoot and then just put in your solver whatever you needed to make that hit. Yeah, you know, that'll get you there, but what happens if you change your load a little bit, or if your ES is really high and those three shots you took on the validation were at 2950, but the fourth shot you take is 2980. Uh, you know, you, you need to know that stuff, so uh, use a good chronograph, shoot enough shots that, that you get a very good average on your muzzle velocity. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure your scope is moving the correct amount of minutes or mils or clicks or whatever you're using for the, the correction you're dialing. So if you need to come up 20 minutes and your scope actually dials 21, you need to know that before you go uh, validating on your solver what the, the corrected drops are. So uh, now that we've gotten through some of those inputs, uh, let's talk about the solver itself. Okay, to start our trajectory validation, we're going to go ahead and do our targeting information, and, and I like to do a uh, target capture on this one so that everything gets done perfectly. So my direction of fire, my angle to the target, the temperature, humidity, station pressure, everything is perfect. And when I get done, I'm going to turn off the environmental update so the Kestrel doesn't heat up. Okay, once we get our information of what the drop should be, according to the Kestrel, we're going to go ahead and take a shot. Uh, I like to do cold bore shots for this. Uh, sometimes I'll do a follow up, especially if I don't believe it. <laughs> but uh, I really like to do cold bore shots for this one. If the bullet lands within a quarter minute of what it called for, uh, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to take it out a little bit further and take another shot and see what it does. If I need to adjust this, this is only 790 yards. This is with the 260 Terminator. Uh, it's 140 grain burger hybrid at 2950. It's telling me I need 16 and a quarter, so I'm going to take that shot, and if it doesn't impact higher or lower, uh, say, than a quarter minute off that, then I don't have to do anything. If it does impact higher or low and I need to adjust it, I'm going to come down to my gun screen. I'm going to select it. Here it shows our muzzle velocity. You can do this a simple way and just adjust your muzzle velocity one way or the other until your drops match what the Kestrel's telling you to do. So if you are high, you're going to have to increase your velocity. If you're low, you're going to have to decrease your velocity. Or you can let the Kestrel reverse engineer it for you. You just click on your muzzle velocity, come down to calibrate muzzle velocity, select it, 
here's your range, your, your transonic velocity distance. Everything's right here. You're going to come down to drop and say this impacted a full minute high. So I'm going to take off one minute of that correction from 16 and a quarter to 15 and a quarter. That's what I needed to make the shot accurately. And what the Elite is telling me now is that my muzzle velocity to validate it or true it to the solver should be 3026 feet per second. So if I want to run with that, I'm going to hit the exit button and it's going to ask me accept muzzle velocity. And if I want to, I'll hit select for yes. If I don't, I'll hit no. Since my 260 Terminator impacted right on the money for that, then I know 2950 uh, works really well with the Kestrel for that bullet. Okay, we're finishing our trajectory validation for the 300 Wind Mag today. Uh, yesterday we worked on the 260 Terminator. We're all out of ammo for that gun, so uh, we had some left over for the 300 Winnie. We already validated it to 790 yards, and we figured out that we had to decrease our velocity to get the right trajectory to match up with the Kestrel Elite. So what we're going to do today is confirm that with a shot at 1119 yards. So let's see where it lands, Jake. Okay, for 1119 yards of 300 wind mag, the Kestrel's telling me I need to come up 29.9. We've got a real light wind, about two miles an hour coming off the two o'clock. Uh, I can see it through the scope. I'm going to put a half minute of right wind to help offset the spin drift, but that's it. Let's come up 30. And just give it a bump. You're not really worried about good wind calls with this. What you want to do is, is get as close as you can to a horizontal line that you're aiming at. And the rock that's out there, there's a really nice crack in it that's perfectly level uh, with my scope. So it's really easy to hold on to it. So let's see what we get, Jake. Send it. Nice. That was within an inch of the horizontal line, and I probably could have shot it for zero wind at all. It impacted about three inches to the right of where I was aiming, but within an inch of that uh, horizontal line I was aiming at. So, you know, that's well below the accuracy potential of the rifle, meaning that. You know, the rifle's shooting three-eighths to a half minute, and that's within a tenth. I can't hold any tighter than that, so I feel real confident with uh, my drops, with the Kestrel now. That's what uh, trajectory validation is all about. Send it. Send it. Nice. Did you see that impact? Well, it was a good shot. Good job, little dude.